Hey friends, welcome to the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast. I'm Rob Kosberg, and every week I show you how to use a best-selling book to grow your income and your impact. And if you're interested in having your own best-selling book, I recorded a short video explaining our trademark process at beginmybook.com. Uh, I have um, something today I think will be really helpful that is not completely book related, but it's at the end of what we want our books for, which is growing our thing, growing our business, maybe starting a new business, maybe starting a, a new product or a new service or selling online courses or testing a new offer, something that I do regularly. And oftentimes what we want is, you know, we want uh, the book on the front end of that. So Danielle, I just pulled your book. There you go. I love these big cookbooks. They're so beautiful. Um, we've done quite a few of them. But you know, the, the end of the road um, for a traditional publisher is this, right? That's the end of the road. The book is done. Now get out there and hustle selling your book. You know that's not the end of the road for us. The end of the road for us is using the book to position ourselves as an authority, as an expert, as the credible leader in a space so that we can help people in greater ways. Yes, we want to get the book into people's hands, but we want to do that because we want flow. So if you are testing a new offer, if you're trying to sell something new, whether it's, whether it's courses or whether it is uh, an, a product or a service, or you're starting an entirely new business, which all of those things are fantastic. I commend you for doing that. You need two things. Well, you need multiple things, but two things in particular I want to talk to you about today. Because I've had two client calls in the last few days, actually yesterday and today. Uh, yes, on Labor Day, one of my mastermind clients. And, uh, and today as well. And uh, it just reminded me of how important it is to talk about this and to really understand what this is. Um, one of the mistakes that I think many authors make, and I don't, think, I don't think it's as much a temptation for you to make this mistake because we talk about it and pound it so much. And even from the very first strategy session call, we talk about how the book is the thing that positions you. The book is the thing that gives you the authority. And it will give you a, a level of flow into your business. But the reality is, we tell people not to expect anything from their book unless they actively use their book. So we've told you, and we want you to know, that unless you're actively using your book to drive leads, to get PR and media, to get in front of your ideal client, unless you're actively doing something every single day to do that, then you're probably not creating the thing that you need the most in your business, which is flow, a flow of leads, a flow of opportunities. If you want to hit a home run, using a baseball analogy, in your business, then you need at-bats. And more than likely, you need many at-bats before you hit one home run. You may get a single, you may get a double, and you may get a home run, but typically you're not gonna get that in three consecutive at-bats. It might take 10 or 20 at-bats for something like that to happen in baseball. And in fact, if you can consistently over a baseball career hit just three out of 10, you're gonna be in the Hall of Fame. The same is true in your business. The problem with too many business people is they don't have the first thing they need, which is flow. You don't have a continuous flow of leads and opportunities in your business. And if you don't, then it's no wonder that you're scratching your head wondering, will my new offer work? Why can't I sell my product? What about my service, et cetera? And yes, your book, especially when we launch it, and maybe if we get you media or PR or TV appearances or that kind of thing, that's going to create some flow, but it's only going to create flow for this window of time. What's going to happen after that? Most of you know that bestseller publishing creates its flow in two primary ways. The number one way by far is paid advertising. And look, I know paid advertising is hard, and I share a lot with you about how paid advertising is really in many ways like the secret ingredient to growing and scaling a great business. But I know that there are many moving parts to do paid advertising well. So let's, let's take a step back 
But I want you to understand, if we didn't spend thousands of dollars every day on paid advertising, I would not have the flow necessary to continue my business and to grow my business. If one day goes and my ads are down, which has happened before because sometimes Facebook, you know, gets a, a burr in their, their shorts and, you know, they shut the ad account off for one reason or another. That's happened once or twice to us over a period of probably seven years. And so the ads are shut down. Every ad is shut down. Now, yes, I'm saving the money, right? I'm not having to spend money for, for those ads. But the reality is, no, I'm losing money because I'm losing the flow. I'm losing the at-bats. So I'm freaking out. Ask Steve, who handles all of our in-house tech stuff. If we're not getting leads from our paid advertising on an every single day basis, then I'm freaking out because we have lost flow. We need flow. That's the number one by far way that we create flow. Now, I didn't always do that, right? There wasn't a time, there was a time rather in the past where I wasn't spending $2,000 a day or sometimes even more than that every single day on paid advertising. You start small, you test, you see what works, and then you scale it up if you wish to. But the second way is a way that all of you can do, and that is content. We create content on a regular basis. This is content creation. I'm teaching you something that's valuable, right? It's valuable to my business. I believe it will be valuable to yours, and I know it will help you in your business. So I'm teaching you something, but from this training, I'm creating video with a multi-camera shoot. I'm teaching, you know, obviously my, my BSP clients, but also this video is going to be repurposed. It's going to be made into multiple emails. It's going to be made into multiple blog posts, which will then go on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera, so that people can consume it and learn and go, you know what? I like this guy or don't like this guy, but I want to learn more. And then we direct them back to the next thing. So flow is first. You need flow in your business. So you're going to have to decide how to get flow. Now, I, I did a training several weeks back, which would be valuable to you. If you're looking to create flow in your business without spending any money on paid advertising, you can certainly do that. But you're going to have to use your other resource because you have two primary resources that you're working with. Primary resource number one is money. Primary resource number two is your time. Now, time is worth a lot more than money because once it's gone, it's gone. You can never get it back. Money, you can always make more money. But if you're trying to figure out paid advertising and you're not there yet, then you need to move over and you need to say, you know what? I need to use time to create content, to connect with people, and to create flow in my business. I showed in a previous training on how to build a $250,000 a year coaching business. Uh, I created a training on how to create flow using LinkedIn, using social media, and using only your time, not a single dollar spent. I would suggest you go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it. It's in the membership area. However, let's say that you've got some flow coming in now because you have to have that, right? Flow is not the only thing that you need. The next thing that you need is you need frame. Flow goes into frame. Now, what do I mean by frame? I mean a couple of things by frame. Frame is, number one, how the person that is being flowed to you views you, okay? Now, when you're a best-selling author, right, and you're the subject matter expert, you literally wrote the book on it, then you're going to have a much better frame than somebody that isn't the best-selling author on the subject, right? That, that's clear. If you add to that, that you've been on television, that you've been on radio, that you do podcasts regularly, right? If you add to the frame of your best-selling author, all of this media, then your authority, your credibility, your frame grows. They look at you as, wow, okay, this person wrote the book on it. They've talked about it on television. Clearly, this gal knows what she is doing. Clearly, this guy knows what he's doing. So you have a, a good frame there. However, that's only part of the picture, right? The other part of the frame is how they view their situation as it relates to your solution for them. Here's what I mean by that. I'm going to do more training on this in the future. And I have some training that may be helpful in our 
um, in our membership area as well on creating frame within the sales conversation. If you're selling something higher ticket, then you need to have, and, and I mean, you know, probably at the very low end, 3,000 and up, then you're, you're going to need a, a sales consultative call with that person to get that person to take next steps. But here's the thing. If you're selling a product or if you're selling a course online, then you still need to create this frame. You still need that consultative sales presentation done to somebody, with somebody, but you're doing it in the form of videos. You're doing it in the form of communicating one to many via video. You can do that and sell a $200,000, $400,000 thing without ever having a telephone conversation. However, you need that telephone conversation if you're selling something more expensive. Here's what has to happen within that framing conversation. Remember, first part of the frame is what? You. They see you as the expert. They see you the, that, the, the person that wrote the book on it. But the second part of the framing is, is what this person that, that is selling is what they're selling really helpful to me? Will it really help fill the gaps? And that's kind of the key. Will it really help to fill the gap in what I, I see as the problem in my business? Now, what I tell my, my sales team, my author development coaches, and what I'm going to be telling them even more, uh, we have a sales training tomorrow, is that if you don't have the part of the conversation with an individual, now, this is true also in selling courses, right? Because you're doing it on video. But if you don't have the part of the conversation that shows them where they're at right now as it relates to where they want to be in their business, then how can your expensive thing fit into their life? Because all they see it as is a cost to them. They don't see it as an opportunity to solve a really big problem that they have. Most people think they have a problem when they're coming to you, but most of the time they don't even begin to realize how big that problem is. So something that we do that helps to set the frame in that conversation is what we call results reality roadblocks, okay? Results are questions that are given to you, the potential client, about what is it that you want to achieve with your business. And, and if you achieve those things, what real transition will happen in your life? So let's just throw out some ideas so that you can kind of understand this a little bit better. Someone may ask you, okay, you, you want to write a book. You want that book to be a bestseller. You want it to make you an expert. Fantastic. Um, what do you want your income to be because of this newfound thought leadership in your space? Okay, so you want to be doing $100,000 a month. Fantastic. If you did $100,000 a month, what would that look like for your lifestyle? Uh, do you want to move? Do you want to live in another place? Uh, what does it look like as far as your business goes, your team? Will you have people now that are helping to support you and you can now focus on the things that you enjoy more? Now, I'm, I'm giving some answers, but because you're going to take a lot longer in this period than the, the two or three minute, minutes that we're gonna give it. But what you're doing is you're digging deep to find out what real results there are that somebody wants to achieve, okay? When you have that, then you have one end of the continuum, right? You have the end of the continuum that's into the future, right? Here's where I wanna be. Here is what I wanna see achieved, fantastic. Now, do we have a gap if we have one end of the continuum? Well, no, you just have this vision, this uh, heroic and beautiful vision of where they want to get their life. It's a feel good, maybe makes them a little warm and fuzzy inside, but we don't have a gap yet. What we need to do is we need to establish a gap. So how do you do that? Well, you want to find out, okay, these are the results that you want to achieve. Let's talk about the reality of where things are right now. Okay. You want your income to be 100,000 a month. What are you earning right now? Oh, 5,000 or 10 or 20,000. Okay, so you're at 20 now. You want to be at 100. You want to 5X your income. Wow, okay. Have you ever done that before? No, all right. 
So you, you, you said that you're really having a hard time in your business because you need help. You need people to support you. Wow. I get that, right? You want a team around you. Terrific. So what's the reality of things right now? Oh, you're, you're a solopreneur. So the, the result you want to achieve is a team and, and support and, and you want other people doing this stuff for you, but you can't afford that right now because the reality is you're all on your own. Okay. Now, what are we doing? We're now creating a gap, right? And we're not making anything up. These are their words. This is where they want to be. And this is where they are right now. This is something you need to do to be able to communicate the right frame to fit your program in. When we sell our done for you program that can range up to $45,000. Let me tell you, that's a big package, right? It's a big package. And if all someone is doing is looking at the cost of that package and they're not considering the massive gap in, in their business, the massive gap in their life, well, this, that 45,000 is not gonna fit in that gap. They're gonna go, whoa, 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 I'm, I'm not, you know, not that interested. I just wanted to figure out, you know, what some numbers were. Okay. How long has it been you've been wanting to write a book? 10 years. Wow. What's changed? What will change? You see, this consultative sales presentation is about flow and frame. You selling a new service, you selling a new product, you starting a new business, um, you selling online courses is about flow and frame. You need flow, you need people to see the offer, you need people to raise their hand and say they're interested, but then there needs to be frame. Frame that you are magic maker, you are the person that can help them, but also they need to see their own need for this thing. And guess what? If they don't have a need for it, then there's nothing to sell that person. There's no investment that they need to make. And there are plenty of people that we talk to that, hey, are very standoffish. And they're like, no, you know, no, I don't, I don't want to share about those things. I just want to know the price. Look, that's not someone that's going to be a good client for, for us. It's not going to be a good client for you, right? Because we want to know that we can meet their needs, we can meet their expect, expectations. We can help them to be successful in the thing that they want to be successful in. But how can we know that without knowing what the results, reality, and roadblocks are? And the last, of course, is roadblocks, which is, okay, if you're here, and this is where you want to be, and there's this massive gap, what's been holding you back? And a lot of times, that's always the same thing. I don't know what to do. I need help getting it done. I'm too busy, et cetera, et cetera. So whatever it is that you are selling, whatever new thing it is that you're offering on the back end of your book, because you're offering something, if you're a client or a potential client of bestseller publishing, you're offering something on the back end of your book, whatever that thing is, you need flow to it, and you need frame in it. And it doesn't matter what the investment is, right? There are people that spend millions of dollars on products and services every single day because they see the need for it in their own lives. The same is true for you. I don't care if you're selling something for $3,000 or $100,000. You need flow to that offer and you need to create frame so that that offer is successfully accepted at least a high percentage of the time. That's all there is to it. So you need to determine what is it that I'm lacking? Do I not have enough flow to it? Am I not, am I getting flow, but I'm not creating great frame to it? Either way, you need both of those things to convert the right percentage to make your business grow, to make your business scale. Hey, hope this is helpful to you. Flow and frame, it's what you need. Hey, thanks for listening in on the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast. If you enjoyed it, please take a minute and like and subscribe to the podcast because every week I bring you either great guests or great teaching to help you to grow your income and your impact with a best-selling book. And if you're interested in having your own best-selling book, check out my short video which explains our trademark process at beginmybook.com.